My name is Joe and you're watching Safari Joe's Adventures. About a month ago I built a file cabinet smoker. I smoked some salmon on it. It turned out great. I'm doing an update on it today. There is a few little issues that I wanted to change. So stick around and I'll show you what's going on with it. One of the issues I had was I had to keep opening and closing the bottom drawer to allow enough air inside to keep the wood burning at a constant temperature. It would either want to go out or flare up and burn the pellets instead of smoke the pellets. If you notice the last video, I set it up on four little blocks. We was able to get oxygen underneath of it to keep it consistent, but that's not really the way I wanted it designed. One of the improvements that I did make on this file cabinet is I drilled a three and a quarter inch hole on either side, put a door on it just like this, got that on both sides and I've also drilled out the file cabinet doors on the sides here to allow more oxygen so when you do have a fire it's easier to maintain than opening and shutting this drawer. Now there are some areas you can save money on building this file cabinet smoker. This is here because I am me. I thought it would be cool looking to put a little smoke stack on there. So I bought myself a piece of exhaust pipe, flange, welded it together. And if you don't have a welder, you're not going to be able to weld unless you pay somebody. But for the flange and the pipe, we're looking at a $20 bill. Probably gonna pay $20 for somebody to weld it also. You do not have to do this little chimney this way. Instead of paying $40 to do the chimney, you can just as easily build one of these. It takes you probably 10-15 minutes if you have a grinder, nut and a bolt, and that will adjust the smoke out of the top just as well as it would anywhere else. Now it may not look as cool as this chimney I built, but it'll be every bit as effective. Another way I wanted to be able to use this smoker instead of just using wood was with a gas burner. That's one of the reasons I drilled out the front of this fire cabinet so I could run gas line through it. What I don't want to do is have a rubber gas line inside a heated cabinet. There's all kinds of things that could go wrong with that. I've bought a couple extra parts that I'm going to be putting together so I can run gas line out of the cabinet with metal instead of rubber. I'm gonna affix these to the valve, come over 90 and go outside the cabinet door. Whenever you're doing plumbing on gas lines, make sure you use tape that's designed for gas lines, not water lines. It's a yellow tape. One other thing, these compression fittings, I see this happen where people will put Teflon tape over compression fittings. You're not supposed to do that. It actually causes more problems with leaks than good. Now this will connect. It will go out through the cabinet door. So everything inside the cabinet will be metal and we don't have to worry about the rubber line catching on fire. All right, we've got the gas line all hooked up. Everything going through the firebox is metal. We don't have to worry about that rubber hose catching on fire. The nice thing about it, I've got the valve inside there all the way open. So I can use another valve and I can turn that up and down for my heat from right here shut it off. I don't have to worry about opening and closing the door to adjust the heat. I've got some salmon in the house that I'm going to smoke tonight. We're going to use this gas burner with a pellet tube. One of the things you want to do when you get your salmon fillets is always rinse them off in cool water. It's always good to make sure they're clean. You can run your fingers through them, check for any bones you may have to pull out. You set them on a paper towel after you rinse them off, then you can pat them dry. Once you have your salmon washed and dried, you can cut them in any size you want. Sometimes I'll cut them in smaller strips like this, put them in a bowl. Other times I'll cut them in a the little bit larger serving size pieces. And that's what I'm doing today. For every 50 people, you probably have 50 different smoked salmon recipes. 
from the brine they use to how long they smoke it. I keep mine simple. It's a dry brine. It's a three to one mixture. I use three parts of brown sugar in light, dark, both are fine. And I use one part of coarse kosher salt, not table salt, it doesn't work the same. Mix well together in a bowl and it'll be ready to cover your salmon. When doing a brining process, you wanna get your fish completely covered with the brine. I like to start by putting some in the bottom and then spreading it out and lay the fish in there. Then you put another layer of the brine on there. Try and keep it in the bowl or the pan. You want every bit of this covered. Lay some more fish in there, more brine. Make sure you got it covered really nice. I've let it sit in the fridge for about six hours. Every bit of that sugar and salt has turned to liquid. It's drawn all the liquid out of the salmon. You wanna rinse the salmon off with cool water. And we wanna make sure we get all that brine, all the salt, the sugar off. You see it's changed colors. We've got the salmon all rinsed off. Now we're just gonna pat it dry. Make sure we can get as much of that off the surface as possible. They'll probably sit here for three hours. They form a pellicle, which is a layer that's kind of sticky. It'll help the smoke adhere to the fish. Well, I got my pellet tube loaded with pellets on fire, getting ready to blow it out so it just smokes. The gas burner underneath going. We'll be setting the salmon on here in just a couple of minutes. Each one of these drawers has a little bit different temperature. This top one is about 180 degrees. Salmon should be smoked between 150 and 180 degrees until the internal temperatures get up between 135, 140, and then it should be good. This next one down, it's a little above 200, so I'm gonna turn the flames down just a hair. We got the smoke rolling out of this. So I'm gonna shut the cabinet drawers. We'll see what happens. It was a late night last night. I smoked a salmon in the smoker and it wasn't finished until after 1 a.m. Anyone that understands what a three dog night is will understand what a three coffee morning is. Now my wife has a quilting group coming over today. I'm testing out some smoked cheese and some smoked salmon to see what their response will be. I have a little bit left over for me to test out myself. I was thinking, He's like, do you guys want to be guinea pigs? I said, I'll be a guinea pig for food anytime. Oh, this salmon looks so good. <laughs> I don't like I it. like the salmon, that's really nice. Thank you. This is good. Smoked salmon is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Is it? Me too. Yes. Now this is part of a little batch I made that the girls didn't get to test. This is made the same way that I made the other, except I cut it into thinner strips. At the last 45 minutes of smoking it, I did take some apricot jam and spread it out on top of it and then let it finish smoking. The apricot jam just adds a little bit different flavor to it and it's really good stuff. You're going to tear me off a little piece and we're going to give it a try. Now I know this is an update on my file cabinet smoker, but what good's a smoker if it doesn't work properly? So we're going to test out the salmon that I made and see if it's good. Hmm. This stuff should be illegal. I'm telling you what, you need to try it out. But this isn't really about the salmon, it's about the smoker. This is a finished product. I thank you for your views. I thank you for your support watching the channel. If you like it, click the like button. You can subscribe, it costs you nothing, and you can catch any of the other builds and the things that I'm doing here. I like your comments, whether they come by email or put them on the channel so other people can see them. Thank you and God bless.